Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and we're going to get ready to check out Wolverine Number 1 by Benjamin Percy. Or I should say the first half of Wolverine Number 1. This is two different storylines. It's a 72 page book, so I'm going to split this into two different reviews. I'll leave a link for it at the end of the video, as well as a link to the X-Men vs. Fantastic Four video I have out right now, where you can go to it and sign up to win the complete limited series of X-Men vs. Fantastic Four. Just head over to that video to get all the details. As far as some of the details for this first story, this one is drawn by Adam Cooper, and the color artist is Frank Martin. And let's get started, but before we do, subscribe, like, comment, and here we go. The book starts out somewhere in Alaska, and Wolverine is laying in the snow, and you don't know what's going on at first, but you realize something has went very wrong. And that's confirmed on the next page with this two-page spread that's very Old Man Logan-esque, where we find out that Wolverine has he's somehow managed to kill his own team. X-Force is down, and Wolverine's behind it. And Wolverine thinks, he thinks back, and he tries to remember what happened. He tries to piece it together in his mind, and all he can think of is that, you know, I couldn't have done this, but I did. They tried to stop me, and somehow they couldn't, even Genie. But that's when he looks up and sees that there are footprints leading away from the fight. And at this point, he doesn't know who it is. He doesn't know if it's either a friend that's running away from him, or if it's an enemy doing the same. But he says, either way, I couldn't be more lost, so I got no choice but to follow. From there, we jump back to Krakoa five days ago, where you have Wolverine in the jungles of Krakoa, played in hide and seek with the kids, kind of giving them this survival lesson while having fun doing it. But of course, Wolverine is hidden in the shadows so well that the kids can't find him, and it isn't until Jean Grey offers to give him a hint and actually just pulls him out of the woods that, uh, that they actually find him. And it's at that point, once she's pulled him out, that she lets him know that Kitty Pride is down at the docks waiting for him. So Logan rushes down to the dock because Kitty's been keeping him supplied with Canadian whiskey, of all things. And as he walks up, he apologizes and said, you know, sorry, the professor had me taking care of something. And she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, since when do you say sorry? And second, Gene already told me why you're late. You were off playing hide and seek with a bunch of booger pickers. Are you serious? Are you getting soft? And Wolverine tries to play it off. He's like, no, I was totally teaching them wilderness survival techniques. But she's like, no, you got to pay the BS tax. You're coming up to sit down, hang out with me and have a drink. Well, you know, they chat over some drinks. They sit there. They talk about how Wolverine is actually, he's happy where he's at. He's content with what he has around him right now. And I think Kate hits it on the head here. He's surrounded by the people he loves. He's, he's missioned with taking care of him and keeping him safe. What more could a guy like Wolverine ask for? But because Wolverine doesn't like talking about himself so much, he swings the conversation back to Kitty and says, Look, you've got to shove off soon, and it's pretty obvious you brought me down here for a reason. So what's the trouble, Kitty? And from there, Kitty starts to explain that, Look, we own the whole, from production to delivery, we own the whole chain for the Krakoan plants. It's all us. However, sometimes things are going missing. Sometimes it's mine pedals. Sometimes it's the antibody pedals, whatever it is, it's just occasionally stuff goes missing. And sometimes it's a little bit, sometimes it's a lot. And it's been as much as a full shipment and they don't know who's responsible and they don't know what they're doing with the product. But whatever it is, it's not good. From there, we jump to a murder scene in Baltimore. And at this scene, we're introduced to a CIA agent named Agent Bannister. Now, Agent Bannister is brought in because this is suspected to be some cartel on cartel violence. However, he quickly realizes that all the injuries, the screwdriver to the head and everything else, are all self-inflicted. Not only that, but he starts looking around and he's like, what are they cooking? This isn't heroin or coke or fentanyl. It's like, what, what is this? And he's, it smells floral. And he puts his, his hand in this substance and he realizes that it's like pollen. From there, we jump back to Wolverine. And Wolverine has went and started to talk to Sage about how can we track where these stolen shipments are going. And Sage already has a plan. And what we find out is that this Krakoan flowers, they have extremely high pollen content. So when you have a large load of them, they put off a signature. Well, when you run that signature, 
against things like political alignments, the time of the year, the season, and all that stuff. You can see these pollen spikes in these countries, and you can, especially if it's a suspect country like Russia, where they spot one of these signatures. And with that information to go off, he assembles the team, gets them all together, X-Force is ready to go. They can't use the gateways because of basically going into Russia, all of those gateways are guarded by like an armored brigade combat team. So instead, they actually call the dude gateway, and he opens the portal, and they're ready to rock. From there, we jump back to Baltimore with this CIA agent, and he's sitting somewhere when another agent approaches him and brings him some information. She's like, look, why don't you just let me email these to you? And he's like, no, nah, paper's better. And it's at that point that someone else comes up and informs Mr. Bannister that she's awake now. And I'll tell you right now, it's this page that has me hooked on this story because as he starts to go in, this little voice from inside says, hi, daddy. And he just responds, hey there, pumpkin. And it's obvious that his little girl's sick. We find out in a white paper that she has leukemia and she's been fighting it for two years. But he sits down and he talks to her about these petals and how these, these petals that he's investigating now and he, he connects it and says you know these are the things that would heal you but instead some people are stealing them and they're using it to make some really really bad stuff and that's making your daddy very very angry from there we jump back to the x-force team who just so happens to jump right in the middle of some kind of freaky human a mutant worshiping cult thing that's going on well, they're quickly trying to analyze what's going on here. Jean Grey's trying to get Logan a sit rep, but she's getting a bunch of mixed messages. The worshippers here, they end up taking this necklace they have off that's filled with this pollen substance from Krakoa, and they start taking it, calling it their communion. Kid Omega's all into this because he's all about, you know, some humans worshiping him. So he goes and starts body surfing on the crowd. Wolverine tries to stop him, but is unsuccessful. And that's right about when Jean just looks over her shoulder and says, Oh no. Not only that, the cult leader goes to talking about how we're going to take communion to now we're going to dr drink the blood of the vine and they start trying to tear Kid Omega apart right there in the middle of all of them. Well, as the fight goes on, suddenly these guys basically start burning up from inside and at, at first Wolverine thinks Quentin Quire's doing it, but it's not and he says, look, it's not like they don't deserve it, but it's not me. And Gene tells him it's not that it's not Kid Omega that's killing him, it's the pollen. Then we jump to one day ago. Now we're in Moscow, and you have Wolverine walk in on a bunch of what looks like a bunch of thug drug lords. And Wolverine doesn't pull any punches. He just pulls a head out of a duffel bag and says, "Look, uh, you familiar with this mutant worshiping cult known as the Order of X?" It's time that we have a conversation about him. Well, this fat Russian mobster tries to end the conversation pretty quick, but that was a mistake, and ends up getting his thugs just pounded into the ground. And then as Wolverine pins the mob boss to the wall with one blade on each side of his throat, he's like, now you're going to tell me where you got the flowers. And he says at first from her, and he, you know, Wolverine just stays on her. Her who? He says, the pale girl. And what we find out is basically that there's this flower cartel, this pale girl. And she is got some kind of ability where she can mind control these individuals. And that's why they have these psionic dampeners. It's to the point that they have these because she walked in and had this mob boss dude pull his lighter out of his pocket and cook his eyeball right there in his socket. From there, we jump back to Krakoa, and actually you have this really neat page of two parallel conversations going on. One on Wolverine's side, where he's talking to Beast about this new drug war that's beginning, and basically mutants are causing it. On the other side, Agent Bannister is talking about how we're going to pose as buyers and set up a meeting with this flower cartel in order to take them down. So it's going to be really interesting to see when these two cross paths. Because, I mean, I really like this agent. I really like Wolverine. I can't wait to see these two guys working together. From there, we jump to the current day, where Wolverine is still marching through the snow, and he's having this conversation in his head about he, he shouldn't have friends. He shouldn't have people close to him, because this is what happens, because I'm not safe. And it's when he looks up, he sees this this bright light ahead of him and he continues towards it and it's at that point that he sees her this the pale girl 
and he whips out the claws. But as he does, he kind of she kind of disappears in front of him. And he's sitting there saying, it was you. You made me do it. And as that happens, these guys come running up. And it's obviously Agent Bannister in his undercover whatever. And uh, he's like, what are you talking about? You know, who are you? And Wolverine, just sitting there looking defeated, says, you know, I've been wondering the same thing. So that's the first issue, or the, the first half of Wolverine number one. Like I said, I've got the second video that I'm going to work on right after this and get it posted as well, but I didn't want to put up like a 25-minute video. I also apologize if I sound like I'm mumbling on this video. My ears are uh, clogged up and I got a real runny, drainy, nasty, funky nose right now, so if I sound like crap, I apologize. So overall, my thoughts on this book... Um, you've given me one character right off the bat, this Agent Bannister, that I could relate to right away. His daughter's sick. He would do anything for her. And these guys that are stealing Krakoan drugs and turning them into this pollen drug, they're taking something off of the market that could save his daughter. If, you know, if she's next in line, or this was 100 people that could have been saved because this drug was created, and now she falls off that list, man, I, I, I dig his motivations. I really like that character it's something right away i could relate to i got a little girl and there's nothing in the world i wouldn't do for her so i mean i totally get that like i said that's just that hit me right away and um, it just got me instantly rooting for this guy i mean what else can i say i do find it odd that a cia agent wouldn't recognize wolverine but maybe that's part of his cover i don't know um the art in it there were a couple panels that i, I didn't really like but overall i thought the art was good i felt like this kept that feel from x-force that we had with joshua Kassara. That kind of grittiness. I did like uh, the one panel in particular where the team was there in the fight with the crazy cult. Overall, I know this book was carrying the $8.99 price tag, but it is, it's a lot of reading. It was, and it's a good book. I definitely recommend going and picking it up if you haven't already. As soon as I finish here, I'm going to work on part two of this video, so make sure you go check that out, and make sure you go register over on that Fantastic Four X-Men video so that you can register to win the complete miniseries. Anyways, guys, definitely go pick this up. That's all I got. Real Comics Stacks, out.